Welcome to this final episode of Liberty Justice for All uh, with Dr. Oz Guinness. I'm so enjoying this conversation. I trust that you are as well. Um, Dr. Guinness, um, you've seen a lot in your time. <laughs> I think you're past four score in years, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. You're right. <laughs> Um, I think you've written over 30 books, uh, as, as I understand it. Um, what would you like to tell um, people in America, uh, who I presume are the primary ones who are watching this, um, the American church? Uh, sometimes it's easier to see things more clearly when you also have an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you're in it, when you're too close to it, it is harder to see, sort of like the blind spots of our time and place, that the people of our time and place may have a hard time going beyond unless we could get something outside temporarily, mm -hmm. geographically, otherwise. Um, what would you want to communicate to? Well, the, I think to the yeah. general American audience, yes. mm -hmm. you know, you've got this polarization, the radical left, who's standing for the republic? and saying what America should be. Make America great again, or President Biden says restore the soul of America. Neither of them say what made America great in the first place. So I think there needs to be a huge national articulation of what America is really about. I'm an admirer of this country, but I don't see many people defending it in terms of the first principles. That's, now, in terms of the church, the Lord knows we need an awakening and a reformation and renewal within the church. You yes. see a lot of things about that. Yes. But at the end of the day, just one thing, a lot of Christians are discouraged mm. and they're demoralized. And I always remember my mother and father, you know, we lived through the, well, we lived through famine. My five million died in the famine we were in in 1943, mm. including my two brothers. Mm. And we moved to the capital, Nanking, and then we were there when the communists took over and the reign of terror began. But in all those years, growing up till I was 10, I never saw my parents' faith in the Lord waver mm. once. What an example. The death of the family, but, you know, this war, violence, revolution, mm. unwaver. And I would boil down what my dad would say to me in this way. He would basically say, God is greater than all. He can be trusted in all situations, have faith in God, have no fear. Mm -hmm. And I think Christians need to move out today yes. with a quiet confidence and assurance. Mm -hmm. The Lord has the whole world in his hands. We yes. need fear. Yes. The sovereignty of our great and good God. Absolutely. And the Romans 8 assurances that nothing can separate us from his love. Absolutely. And the, what, 365 times that the Bible tells us to, in various ways not to be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> that right. He has That's not given us a spirit refrain. of fear, yeah, but of power and love mm -hmm. and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. um, much needed. Yeah. Much needed. Um, in, in the face of, I think, many things and many ways that, uh, that if we let them, it can get us discouraged or yeah. down. But those words of Jesus, um, in this world you will face mm -hmm. trials, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, that seems so important in, in, in the midst of all the challenges mm -hmm. that, that are there. Um, wars and rumors of wars, um, uh, challenges uh, in in all sorts of different ways, the nature of which we've talked about in, mm -hmm. in, in, in these previous episodes. Um, it, it would be uh, fantastic if we could see the Lord's hand work for a third great awakening mm -hmm. and a worldwide revival uh, along these lines. Um, I think that would, that would be amazing <laughs> because God's work is amazing. Um, in terms of, in, in terms of political engagement. I think you've said some things critically in terms of um, political engagement. What would you say positively in terms of what should Christian engagement politically in this country look like? 
we must be engaged. I mean, I've met many Christians who say something like, well, I can't do anything, but I'm like the early church. They were faithful, but they kept their heads down. And I'm doing the same. That's totally wrong. The early church, even our Lord, was under a Roman dictatorship. There was zero room to move politically. But the American Republic, based on the Hebrew Republic in Exodus, one of the key ideas of Exodus is the reciprocal responsibility of everyone for everyone. Love your neighbor as yourself, yes. and so on. Yes. So the Jews have a saying, every Jew is responsible for every Jew. Yes. Rather like the three musketeers, yes. all for one, one for all. <laughs> now, the equivalent for that should be every American mm. is responsible for the American experiment. Mm. So for Christians who don't engage, who don't vote, who don't participate, mm. it's a failure of citizenship, mm. and I think it's a failure of discipleship mm. too. Mm. So there must be political engagement. Mm. But in the old 19th century way, the Lord's work in the Lord's way. Yes. And the trouble is many Christians have catapulted into politics and just doing it the way everyone else does it. Mm. Mm. So we've got to be prepared to say, yes, I approve of so-and-so, but I challenge this and that. Mm. You know, you can think of, say, support for the former president. Many of his policies were wonderful, but they should have challenged the way, for example, he used his words to insult people and bully them. And by giving uncritical support, evangelicalism has become toxic in many people's ideas. Whereas someone like Wilberforce is much more critical. Mm. So You'd be clear when he yeah. was in favor, mm -hmm. and you can be clear when he was opposed. So you're talking about a robust and thoroughgoing exactly. Christian worldview and engagement that not only models but calls for virtuous engagement. Exactly. Um, I, think, I think you use the term civility in, in this book. Mm -hmm. um, which doesn't seem to go along too well mm. with shouting talking heads or, um, or uh, the trading of ad hominems or, or what have you. Um, although, is it not true, uh, if, I were to, if I were to talk about that particular aspect a little bit, that is it not true that Jesus himself said things that might be deemed not nice, <laughs> Uh, no, you know, brood of vipers, yeah. uh, whitewashed white tombs, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and things along those lines. Yeah. That Fox Herod, uh, is there not, or the prophetic literature where it does not mince words in calling out the injustices that certain people were mm -hmm. involved in. Um, what's the difference between that? And, well, and, I argue and, for and, and civility, yeah. which is yeah. just a common term. Yes. But I also make very clear, civility by itself yeah. will do nothing. Yeah. And then with all the social media and the hate and so on, yeah. civility is like the Maginot Line mm. in France. It won't hold back mm. the blitzkrieg of power politics. Mm. But we as followers of Jesus, we have a high view of truth. We have a high view of respect for human dignity. And our Lord calls us to something that even the Jews think is crazy. Love your neighbor as yourself, yes. Love your, Love your the stranger, yes. Mm. But our Lord says, love your enemies. And that is radical. Yes, it is. So we've got to examine how we're doing it mm -hmm. and make sure we're closer to our Lord. Yes, yes. On that note, we conclude this series of episodes with Dr. Oz Guinness on liberty, for justice, liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for joining Thank me you. on this series of episodes that we've had together. My pleasure.